I don't need to have everything figured out before I actually make that decision. If I think God is calling me to be a priest, maybe I owe it to him to be able to give a year of my life to, to give it a shot, to try it out. Hello, welcome back to San Firm Productions. My name is Father Jordan Dosh. I'm the vocation director for the Diocese of Bismarck. As the vocation director, I work with all the seminarians, all the young men who are studying to be priests. And to be honest, this wasn't really something that I thought about when I was a seminarian, but since becoming vocation director and, and becoming more involved in formation, I saw it as something uh, worthwhile to communicate to the faithful. And it's just the idea of seminary, like what seminary is like. My reason for wanting to talk about that or wanting to communicate it or why I think, you know, it'd be good for you to know what seminary is like is first and foremost uh, to dispel any misconceptions that what a young person may have about seminary that could uh, potentially uh, prevent them from joining seminary, right? So like if a young guy has in his head what seminary is like and that's not actually what it's like, it could prevent them from joining seminary. So I would just like to clarify what that looks like. So hopefully it could be an easier decision uh, for that guy to join. Uh, But secondly, you know, this isn't just for people that are discerning. I I want everyone to know the amount of effort that it goes into forming a young man to be a priest, right? It's, um, it's, it's, It's incredibly humbling for me to be able to think about it, a guy who went through that process, to think about, uh, you know, uh, the amount of hours, right? It isn't just about studying. It isn't just about passing classes. There's a lot of priests. There's a lot of staff at a seminary that are all there trying to help this man become the best possible priest that he can become so that when he goes into the parish, he can be more of a bridge, as John Paul II says. He can be more of a bridge to the people for the people to get to God, right? The priest is the one... uh, that dispels the sacraments, and the people are able to receive them. And, and sometimes within our own human formation, right, we need to make sure that there isn't anything, you know, that I'm doing that could prevent someone uh, from having that access to God. And, and seminary formation really kind of works out all those kinks. So the first thing is just for a young man uh, who may be thinking about it, uh, for him to have a correct idea of what it looks like. And the second is just for everyone uh, to know uh, what, it, what it's like, right? And, and the care that the church has for the priests uh, because they care about the people and they want the people to get to heaven uh, and, you know, good priests uh, will, will help aid in that uh, journey. So the first thing is, uh, right, to dispel any misconceptions, right? When you hear of seminary, most people think it's like, you know, you're just kind of like a big concrete building. It's just kind of sad and gloomy, and I wear this, like, long robe, and I kind of stay in my uh, room all day, you know, five by seven foot cell, and when the bell rings, I go down to the chapel, say my prayers, go back up to my room, and I just kind of, like, study all day, right? That is not what seminary is like at all, right? Seminary, I, I had a great experience in seminary. Seminary was, was fun, right? It was great. Uh, it was 100 guys living in a building together, striving for virtue, right? It, it's, it's a big house of guys like wanting to know Jesus better and helping each other get to know Jesus better, right? So what is a typical day in the life of a seminarian look like? So right away, uh, you know, the guy would wake up most likely before 6 a.m. and uh, get ready for the day, and he would head down to the chapel and the first thing that all seminarians do is, is they'll, they'll pray a holy hour together, right? They pray for an hour every single day. Because if you're not praying, you're not able to hear God's voice, and therefore you're not able to discern. So a seminarian like, who doesn't pray, like, what are you doing in seminary, right? So doing the holy hour will help the young guy be able to come close to God. So the church, uh, the seminary will most likely have adoration, and the seminarian uh, will pray for an hour every morning. And then at the end of that, they'll, they'll uh, celebrate Mass. So the seminarian is going to daily Mass. Sometimes within uh, the holy hour, um, the seminary will pray the liturgy of the hours uh, in community, right? So uh, whether it's morning prayer or something like that, uh, they'll, they'll pray in community. So the young man uh, who 
if he is called to be a priest, will make a promise of praying the Liturgy of the Hours. He starts praying those when he's in seminary so he can form that habit and he can learn you know, how to navigate the book and, and he can start praying in that way. So once he's done uh, with Mass, uh, the day will go on as normal, right? So he's a student. He may have classes in the morning, may have classes in the afternoon. Uh, he'll typically have projects that he's working on. He'll have uh, different meetings. Uh, he may have spiritual direction. He may have a formation meeting. Um, he may have some sort of like apostolic outreach. So when I was in seminary, um, I was assigned to do lots of different things. I taught um, CCD, religious education. I helped out in a nursing home. I gave tours of a church. Um, I uh, helped out on a campus uh, for different um, uh, college students who were studying abroad. Uh, the church tries to put you in these different scenarios to help you practice ministry, right? And so they'll do some sort of outreach like that. And usually in the evening, uh, the guys will get together and, and they'll, they'll pray evening prayer together. They'll talk about the day. Maybe they have different meetings. So the life of a seminarian, like the typical day, is, is kind of what a normal person would go through. Maybe they have more meetings uh, more conferences, kind of stuff like that. But the big thing is the scheduled holy hour early in the morning, the scheduled mass, and the liturgy of the hours throughout the day, which you know each seminary may schedule those differently. Another way in which I'd like to describe seminary is the difference between internal form and external form. Right? So internal formation would be considered like spiritual direction and confession. Right? So every young guy who's discerning seminary uh, is going to be assigned a spiritual director to be able to talk to someone about what he's praying about and, and help make sense of kind of what he's going through. And it, it's, it's really funny uh, to, you know, have had a spiritual director for so long. They're, they're not, you know, a guru, right? They're, they're not like someone who just like, you know, says something in such like a profound way that kind of like flips your world upside down. You, you don't need like the smartest, the most intelligent. Uh, you do need someone who's holy, who prays. Uh, but most of the time, they just kind of like point out the obvious of like a way in which you didn't see it. Uh, or they help point out like certain confirmations of the movements of God, right? So speaking with the spiritual director can, can really help a young man. And, and typically, their spiritual director is uh, also their confessor, the person that they go to confession to. So just as um, confession is under the seal of confession, that the priest doesn't talk about it, uh, spiritual direction is, is held in confidence between the directee and uh, the director. Uh, so it's, it's not something uh, that is talked about, and the directee can be free to express himself uh, to the director. So internal form has to deal with like spiritual direction and confession, a big part of seminary life. Uh, but then there's external formation, right? So external formation, uh, the way in which I would describe it as... Um, it's smoothing out the rough edges of a young man uh, so that he may become the best possible priest uh, for the people that he's serving, right? So this, uh, in you know, kind of a bad analogy, is kind of like the more like military side of seminary. So it's uh, the human formation, making sure you know, the guy is studying, that he's getting good grades, uh, that his uh, room is clean, that he's showing up to things on time, um, you know, that he's being kind and con uh, courteous, uh, that he's learning you know, to become a good speaker, um, and these are all opportunities for external formation. So typically, internal, spiritual direction, you meet with him at seminary, and you'd meet with him uh, twice a month. Uh, and then external formation, you would meet with your formator, who are not the same people. You would meet with your formator uh, once a month. And, and they would talk about, how's seminary going? Right? What was it like to you know, have a roommate? What's it, what's it like to, to live in this house? And, and sometimes, like, as a seminary, you're saying, like, man, this guy's just, like, really making me mad. Or I'm, like, really struggling in this class. Uh, or um, this apostolate that I'm doing, like, I cannot, like, communicate to these kids. Or um, I'm having a, a really hard time waking up in the morning. Or, or I don't know how to pray the liturgy of the hours. And those are all opportunities between the young man who's studying to be a priest and the, the formator who is a good priest to be able to help him understand maybe like how to navigate these situations. And sometimes there's correction that's needed to be given, right? And like I said, those are ways in which we can smooth out our rough edges so that when the guy does uh, get ready for ordination, that he sees that uh, I want to be a good priest, right? I don't want any of my 
own personal limitations to prevent someone from coming close to God. As, as I said, John Paul II says, uh, I want to be a bridge to God. I want people to get closer to God. Another way to explain seminary is the four pillars, right? The four pillars of formation. So there's the spiritual pillar, uh, there's the academic pillar, there's the human pillar, and there's the pastoral, right? So spiritual, uh, I've already kind of covered it in spiritual direction. So the guy's praying the Liturgy of the Hours, he has his uh, personal devotions, he's going to Mass, he's doing spiritual direction. And while he's in seminary, you know, obviously a big thing that he's going through is discerning that this is where God wants him to be, that, he, that he's called to be a priest, right? So there's, uh, you know, the important spiritual formation, uh, the human formation, uh, you know, like I said, in the, in the formation side, uh, that it's making sure that he's going to be a good man, right? Uh, that his room is clean, that he's on time uh, for certain things. Academic, uh, what are his grades like? Um, in seminary, so if you would enter right out of high school, seminary would typically be eight years, right? You would study philosophy for four years. You would study theology for four years. Now, it's really important to see that it's not the academic formation that progresses a guy through his time in seminary, right? It isn't his ability to pass a class that makes him ready to be a priest. What makes him ready to be a priest is, first and foremost, that Jesus is calling him to be a priest, uh, but also that he has the, the, the spiritual life uh, of, of a priest, you know, that, that he's learning to pray, that he has the human formation uh, that will make him uh, to be a good priest, and the academic, you know, that he has the knowledge to be able to communicate this in a good way. And the last is pastoral, right? So um, through my human formation of, like, me communicating this in a good way, through my spiritual formation, the way in which I pray about this, my academic formation, the way in which I learn about it, how do I put that into practice, right? How do I communicate this to the people that I'm serving? Because priests, right, we, you can have many different assignments. You can be in a parish, right? You can teach. Uh, you can be a vocation director. There, there's many different avenues, uh, may, many different things that you're called to do, and you're really called to be all things for, for, for all these people. Uh, and the pastoral formation uh, gives us a good example and practice as to how to live that out well. Lastly, I just want to talk about, you know, what type of person would join seminary, right? So the first misconception is that I joined seminary because I know I'm called to be a priest. It's important to be able to see that, like, you don't need to have everything figured out before you actually make that decision to join seminary. You don't want to be discerning, you know, the end of the road when you're missing your most immediate decision, which is right in front of you, Right? Uh, in considering whether or not to join seminary, your most immediate decision is, you know, am I ready right now? Is this the time? It isn't, am I called to be a priest, which is the end of the road. The most immediate decision in which you're trying to discern is, is this the time for me to join seminary? A stat that uh, typically surprises people is that two-thirds of guys that join seminary don't become priests, right? Um, a couple weeks ago, I was actually just at a reunion for my college seminary. And uh, it was kind of surprising to be able to look at my graduating class, and then from that, how many guys actually ended up getting ordained. And it, it is, it's a smaller number, but that's a good thing, right? It isn't that these guys, uh, you know, were not capable, were not qualified. It's that they discerned that God wasn't call, calling them to be a priest. And their time in seminary wasn't a waste, right? Um, at this reunion, it, it was so beautiful. We had a mass, and, and there was a lot of guys that I was in seminary with who are now married, who have all their, you know, kids at the, at the mass, and they're bringing them back to the seminary to be able to show their kids. I gave up a year of my life to discern if God was calling me to be a priest, and, and I'm a better man for that, right? It's, it's an incredible gift which these guys are able to give their kids. So it's important to be able to see that I don't need to have everything figured out before I actually make that decision. That if I think God is calling me to be a priest— Maybe I owe it to him to be able to give a year of my life uh, to, to give it a shot, to try it out, right? When, when I was thinking about it, um, to be honest, I probably thought about it a little bit too much uh, on the intellectual side uh, because I thought to myself that if I join seminary, you know, I'm going to become a better man, right? The, the, the formation which I'm going to receive is going to teach me how to be a better man. Uh, I'm going to become a better father. I'm going to be, uh, become a better husband if God is calling me to be married, right? I'm going to learn how to pray. Right, I mean, like, learning how to pray. 
that you're in a seminary and they're teaching you how to pray. Not only are they teaching you how to pray, but you're praying every day for an hour. You're receiving the sacraments every day and, and you have good spiritual direction. You're learning how to pray, which that can only benefit you for the rest of your life. And then most importantly, like you have this question of whether or not God is calling me to be a priest. And if you join seminary and you're honest with formation and you fully enter into it, you, you will get that question answered, right? So whether or not God is calling you to be a priest, you will be able to enter into your vocation wholeheartedly knowing that you are where God wanted you to be. When I, when I was thinking about seminary, um, it, it just kind of happened that I would, I would speak to older guys. And uh, I, I remember I, I once had this guy say to me, he said, I hear you're thinking about seminary. And, and he was married and had kids. And he, he just said, I always thought I should have been a priest. And that just like blew my mind. Like for some reason, you know, hopefully I'm sure I handled uh, my response to him charitably. But in my mind, I just kept thinking, I'm like, I don't want to be 50 years old thinking I should have done something else. Right? I'm young right now. I have the ability to give of my life to discern this properly. And it can only benefit the rest of my life. So it's not going to be a waste. Right? Giving seminary a shot is not going to be a waste. I'm going to become a better man. And for me, the biggest thing was I kept thinking about seminary. It was just on my mind. And, And I just wanted to know whether or not I should be a priest or not. So I gave it a shot. The best place to discern is in seminary because it provides the framework to be able to do this well. Now, I'm not saying that everyone needs to join seminary. Most guys don't need to join seminary. But if you're thinking about it a lot, and, and, and maybe you have thoughts that God isn't calling you to be a priest, but you still think about it often, give it a shot. Right? What's the worst that could happen? You're young. You know, give it a year. You know, oftentimes, like even if you're dating someone, you know, in our diocese, there's many great examples of, of guys, uh, you know, who you know, broke up with their girlfriend, they joined seminary. And, and sometimes when we offer something up to God, if it is of his will, he'll offer it back to us, right? And these guys had a good experience in seminary. They just turned out, they found out God was not calling them to be a priest. And they, and they went on to marry that lady. You know, it's beautiful. And now that's a great gift that, uh, that that guy is able to give their kids. So it's important to be able to see that seminary formation um, is, is for the young man to become a, you know, a good version of himself, that he's learning to love Jesus, he's learning to love the church, uh, and that he's going to come serve the people, uh, whether serve the people as a married man or, or serve the people as a priest. And there, there was never a moment in my time in seminary which it just kind of like clicked and it's like, okay, I'm, now I'm a priest. Now I'm going to be a priest. But I'll say, whenever I got to the end of a year in seminary, I would ask myself, you know, how is this going? And if I was honest with myself, I would say, I'm never, I've never been as happy or peaceful in my whole life. So then I came back another year, get to the end of that year, and I'd say, yeah, I'm even more happy and more peaceful in my life, right? Come back another year. And it was something that I grew in clarity through that time of being in seminary. I grew in clarity that this is what God was calling me to because that's where the consolation was, right? So that we were able to finally choose God. Seminary is, is beautiful. That doesn't mean it's uh, not without its trials and struggles. It's, it's hard. Uh, the classes are hard. Uh, you're usually uh, far away from family. Uh, but there's beautiful work that's being done in the young man. Uh, he's, he's learning to deal with his own imperfections. Uh, He's learning to pray. He's learning to love God uh, so that he can serve God and he can serve the people. So as vocation director, I'm obligated to be able to say this, but if there is any young man who's thinking about the seminary, just don't be afraid. You know, give it a shot. Like, what's the worst that could happen? Uh, You know, give of your, be generous with God. You can never out be done in generosity. It's beautiful. I love being a priest. I absolutely love being a priest and being in seminary you know, help me uh, prepare for that. So just don't be afraid. I'd like to thank the men at Stand From Productions. Uh, you're doing great work. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, feelings, desires, whatever you have, let us know. Uh, we'd love uh, to hear from you uh, so that we can keep putting out good content. God bless. God bless.